Today's video, I actually wanted to take you guys through another chit chat video. I have been very, very sick with an upper respiratory infection. And you know, I'm one of those people that really tries to turn something negative into a positive. So the whole while I was sick, I was actually thinking, I really want to record, but you know what? I probably really need to record myself sick, how I don't look sick. Cause you know kind of how you feel better when you don't look as bad? Kind of a play on that. So. I want to actually take you through a quick process of how I pull yourself together and looking your best even when you don't necessarily feel your best. I think it actually plays a major part on our psyche. So I want to actually show you some of my tips and techniques on how to look better when you don't feel good. And I'm not sure if I'm going to title it that but you know you'll get you'll get the, the main premise. Come on let's actually get started and I'm going to turn this into So of course, none of my videos are ever started without me using my skincare regimen. I will least list all the products in the down bar just in the effort to save time. I'm going to go through the entire system. I'm probably going to wait about five minutes and then I'll actually start it. Start applying my makeup. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to fast forward through all of this. I'm ready to go in and start to really remove the part that makes me look the most tired sick um, you know just not not really attractive I like to go in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills cream contour kit you guys have heard me mention this before this is one of my newest holy grail items and I really like to go in and color correct right here because I get the darkest right here you guys definitely have heard me mention this before I think color correcting is one of the best things that you can do before you apply a concealer because it will minimize the darkness that happens in the skeletal area right here and uh, it will allow your concealer to work better it will look brighter it won't go gray or green or pink i know you guys have been like oh my gosh you know i you have to be on like me i mean I, I can't think that i'm the only person in the world that really obsesses over this stuff concealers for me don't work unless I have completely erased the darkness. So if you've been having issues trying to find the perfect concealer, and this is totally aside, having them be, you know, setting them properly and not sinking into the fine lines and wrinkles, that's a whole nother video. And I actually have already created a video for that. So I'll make sure I leave it in the down bar. But color correcting to me is the best way to get that concealer to really work so it can kind of create brightness. And oftentimes, I don't even have to go in and use a concealer when I use a color corrector. The foundation is just enough. So we'll see today if I can actually get it to appear that way. But trust me when I tell you, color correcting, yes, for every complexion. All right, so I'm using the color corrector. Now I'm actually going to start playing with the other colors in this palette. I'm just going to highlight a little bit. I'm going to do any of my highlighting and major contouring before I even put my foundation on. And I, I don't go in any specific way. I'm not, you know, super clean with this because once I go in and blend out, everything really meshes together. Contour with the same palette. I'm gonna pop between these two shades.
If you haven't seen my review video on this new foundation, I have them again in the down bar so you can catch up on that. But this is a liquid foundation with the spill proof technology. Can, can you see that? I'm gonna just go in with my beauty blender and go on in. It's a very luminous foundation. It does give me, I would say I got about eight hours of wear the other day and let me tell you, my sinuses were draining so bad. I know it's so disgusting, right? But we are chit-chatting. And um, the only place that it kind of wore a little bit was around my nose, but even then it wasn't horrible. Like it wasn't like me using my Makeup Forever foundation would have slipped, I think, with, with all the tugging I was doing around my nose area. It really did give me hold. And I've had a lot of you ask me that. Do I really like it? The Double Wear To Go foundation is, it does have its own client. If you are, you know, going to the gym after work and you're gonna try and shower and go out, the Double Wear might be, might be just the, the one for you, the original Double Wear, because it is gonna give you 12 plus hours of wear, I believe. This foundation is for the girl that's on the go. You know, you're going to the office in the morning. You don't want to look overly made up, but you want to look polished. I think this is the makeup for you. And I love it. It photographs really, really nice. I was kind of skeptical on that, I have to say, because I'm so used to products having that HD word on it. And I know when I get up on the camera, it's going to show all my secrets if, if it's not up to standard. But this makeup, I've actually been in impressed with it. The more I use it, the more I like it. And as I mentioned in my review, you have to find your own comfort zone with applying it. You have to know your face. I tell you to go in and get your sample. They just did a full foundation sample blitz of this. They still have part in stock. So yeah, that's what it looks like after I'm done. And now because I want to create a little bit more brightness, I am actually going to use my Sensual Skin Enhancer. You guys have heard me mention this before, so I'm just going to kind of plow through this real quick. So this video is not 35 minutes long. And I'm going to set all of this with my Airspun Powder. This is the Honey Beige. I'm going with my Damp Beauty Blender. This is the trick though with setting this, guys. Stretch your face and gradually pop that powder in. So what you're not doing is dislodging the product you've already applied. And then if you have fine lines, another trick that I've learned is to look up and press the beauty blender up. So therefore the fine lines are gonna be expanded and they're gonna push into the eye instead of trying to constantly pack the powder on the fine line because then no, pow no powder fits in the line itself. So it always stays wet and therefore it shows the line worse. So I'm going to just do this little trick. I know it looks weird, but it works. Now I've done all that. I'm going to just grab my NYX. I think a lot of you guys probably already have this. And I'm going to use my Cotton Von D Shade and Light. And I'm just going to pop along this row right here and go back in to really re-emphasize my contour. And you see how it streaked a little bit right there? That means I didn't set that as good, but it's not as streaky as it would have been had I not set it at all with the translucent powder. So I'm just going to kind of whip that in and create this beautiful contour. So I'm going to go in and use a little bit of my banana powder. I have popped a little bit in my cap and I'm just going to clean up this contour my contour and I'm going to let that set right there and you'll see it just really chisels out the bone structure. Do brows real quick. I've already done the brows. I'm actually going to move in now with my Estee Lauder. This is a matte perfecting primer. This is a little sample. I'm not really big on using primers but I have been using them lately on my eyelids and it works really, really well. So I'm actually going to remove all of that creasing that that foundation and the concealer is actually applied there. I'm gonna remove all of that. So if you guys actually have an issue getting your eyeshadow to stay put, if that lid is very slick, 
that makeup is going to slide around. So then a lot of your work is going to be in vain. So just trying to dry that up makes the biggest difference. And I like the finish that a primer gives. It's emollient enough, it's colorless, and it really does allow that eyeshadows to really pop. You know, I do have this cream eyeshadow right here. This is my pure color. It's called Cosmic. It's Estee Lauder. It's a cream. And I'm just going to apply a little of that on right now just for a little bit of enhancement in color. And the thing is, when I'm doing eyes and I don't feel well, sometimes you still need to do them. But choosing the right colors, I think, is key. I stay away from my blues and purples and greens. Anything that has more of a violent type undertone. I tend to wear colors that are a little bit brighter in my clothes, possibly even in my lips, but I don't want it to be around the eye area because sometimes it can make you look like you're more bruised around the eye area. And girls, we don't want that. So whereas I might be drawn to colors like this with the purples, this is the Steel Orchid palette by Estee Lauder, or I might even be drawn to this smoky um, not so much what I said but for the sake of you guys requested me to show you this eyeshadow palette and I've worn it in a couple of my other videos and this is the Tempting Nudes it's an Estee Lauder palette but if you can't get your hands on that one the Nudes which is the Maybelline quad is amazing I love it a lot of you girls have your hands on the Naked One it has those browns and those golds and those coppers that really allows the eye to pop without having so much of a punch, okay? So kind of stay in that. We're gonna move into this shade called Cobblestones. It's a beautiful metallic brown. And I'm actually just gonna rub my finger in it and I'm gonna pop that. Can you see what just happened? How I have instant impact of color? Can you see the difference? And I'm just gonna lay that color right on the lid. No specific way, just really gonna pile it on. And it does have these beautiful gold undertones to it. And I can kind of create a little bit of a day smoky eye without having my eyes look puffy and not being in any specific color range. Although it's a brown, it goes as nude, which is why I call what why I think Essie Water called it tempting nude. And I'm just gonna pack that on the lid. Minimal fallout because I've already layered that lid and just pushing that color in. Next, okay. I'm going to grab my Sigma E25 blending brush and I'm going to move into this shade right here. And this is the Sandbar Beige. It's a matte. Very important. It's a matte shadow. And I'm just going to blend out any harsh lines that that darker shade would have produced. Okay. Blend that out. And just blend around it. And you see what I'm doing? I'm keeping all the color going up. I'm not really popping too much around that lower line. Remember that bag is pronounced for me right now. So I don't want anything that's underneath there other than as bright as I can actually possibly get it. And now that I want to really impact this color, I went back into that same cobblestone shade. And I'm going to really start to blend out the exterior V with that same shade. And there's a brown right here that I'm going to pop, pop this into as well. It's called Lavish Me. And I'm just going to really enhance the exterior beat just a little bit. And once you've already layered colors on, the intensity is gone, but you still get a wash of color. And that's really what I'm going for right now, a wash of color. Now, if I really want to make a little bit more impact, I can go into this shade called... It's called khakis, but it's kind of a goldish, kind of a goldish metallic. And I'm just gonna pop that right over top of the brown that I've already laid down, just right on the lid. And I don't have to, but it does kind of draw a little bit more attention to this area here instead of that little bag area. You guys have heard me mention my cream eyeshadow pencils. This is the 12 hour made to lash eyeshadow pencil in continuous almond. This is a Jordana pencil. And I'm just gonna put this on my lower lash line as soon as I finish sharpening it.
And what this does is really allows that bottom lash line to open up. Can you see that? I'm get a little bit of my Elf setting spray and I'm going to spray it with one of my sweeper brushes. This is a Sigma sweeper brush. And I want to go back into this cobblestone color. And just kind of lightly rim any of the smudging that that continuous only left. So what I've really done is made the eye look more open and I still have a gradual slight light smoke eye that is wearable anywhere on any complexion, okay? So brown is really our girl's best one. And then if I wanna just kinda of pack more on that exterior thing, I can do that now because this brush is still a little bit damp, so it's gonna minimize the effect of a fallout. Okay? And if you guys don't know what fallout is, that's when the eyeshadow kinda of crumples up under your eye. We don't like that. I'm just gonna take that blending brush and blend that back and forth as well. Pushing everything up. Clean that brush off, gonna spray it one more time. And I'm going to go into this shade called New Fresco. It's a beautiful pink satin. And I'm just going to pop that on that inner V. Just to kind of create a little bit of light. So it's okay for me to go back in this inner V and push in the light colors. I just don't want to rim it with anything dark because remember that could enhance where we're a little bit puffier. It could enhance where we're a little bit darker. Because even though you start to feel better, it takes a minute for our body to, to know that we feel better. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm gonna grab a liquid eyeliner. You can bypass this point if you guys are not comfortable with it. I am gonna use black. I'm just gonna create a quick wing on this upper lash line. Just a quick wing, and what happens is it draws their attention up. Nothing below. Okay, you feel me? You feel what this is going to look? coats and mascara. I'm going to use my super size mascara just to give me some length. And of course, I'm going to apply falsies. I'm going to go ahead and get this first coat of mascara on first. I actually bought these 615 lashes. And I'm going to try to insert a photo right here. These are by Salon Perfect. They are long. They are spiky, but they look very day-night appropriate. You can find them in Walmart. They're $2.99, I believe. And, you know, I thought they were just absolutely beautiful. And they have really been allowing me to project that I'm not sick, so to speak, because they're long. They don't have a lot of volume, so they don't kind of create dark shadows around the eye area. I think you can customize them. If they're too long for your lash line, I think that's very, very important. And, you know, any anything we can find at Walmart, you know, like, okay, that's good. Just quick and convenient. So while that glue is drying or that adhesive is drying, I'm actually gonna go back and add more length on my lashes. Now, with these lashes, the more length you can kind of create on your own lashes, the better they look because they are just long. They don't have a lot of lash on the band. So you need to create as much thickness at the root of your lash as possible. And get that lower lash line as intense as possible as well. Now while all that is drying, I'm gonna grab my MAC Mineralize Powder and just remove any of this excess banana powder and just kind of blend over that skin. really buying time to let that adhesive dry. I'm gonna hold my head back, push my lashes down, and 
and set the faucet on there. Grab your little mirror and just secure them in place. Can you see that? Length. Can you see that? I have a new highlighter that I want to try today. It's a So Hollywood Illuminator by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I love the peach nectar, but I'm gonna try this one just to see if I love it as much. And I've dampened my fan brush. This is an elf fan brush with my elf setting powder. And I'm just gonna kind of whisk back and forth. And, oh, hello. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. Hello, I like, hello. Mm. Ooh, ooh. Wait, let me find out. Mm, let's try that again. That was so good a second time. Got to be better, girls. Mm -hmm. Swipe that in here. Oh, come on through. How light. Yes. Oh, that's pretty. Can you see that? That's gorgeous. I like. I like that highlight. What you guys think? Thumbs up? Thumbs up for that highlight? Now we've done all this nudeness. We've worked with skin. Get these bangs together. We work with skin. I think I actually can stand to do a little bit of a dark lip. Okay. Yes, I can do a nude lip, but I think at this point we do need a little bit of color. So I'm going to use my Black Cherry Lip Gloss by Anastasia. I really don't want to do a matte lip today because my lips are dry. I've been sick. So, you know, let's try this. Oh, God. That is good. Uh my lips are so dry. Mm. Oh, this lip gloss smells so good. It smells like vanilla. And there we have a very bold lip that's glossy it doesn't show that my lips are dry and chapped and that i'm suffering from a cold so what do you guys think if you couldn't hear that i was sick do i look sick give me two thumbs up make sure that you comment down below for more videos from me makeup by kiani but for now guys that's all we have and until next time i'll talk to you soon because kisses bye